Suffolk Avenue would like to shout out our heartfelt thanks for all the ways you have invested in us over these years, and especially to our back to school revival and rallies. Your service, gifts, faith, and prayers show us that you love us. Peace and blessings to our families and our sponsors and ministries and our Kane Avenue family. Thank you. Anytime, 
Amen. Amen. Let us praise God for Sister Why Be On this morning. Amen. This morning, my young brother Zion looks like he's suited to be the next, the second black U.S. senator from New Jersey. I want to thank you all. I saw uptick on Tuesday uh, for our afternoon Bible study. I saw uptick on a Wednesday evening. I saw uptick even my own two children. You all give me a hand for getting them out this morning. <laughs> for 
folks in Wawa and, and, and said, we're not used to seeing you this early in the morning. And I told them, I'm not used to seeing myself this early with two kids in the morning. I want, though, if I can, if I will, to speak to you from Jonah. Again, those of where we will not hold long. I know it's football Sunday, and I know I want you to stay a little longer, so I'm going to be paying attention to your amens, and if you make those vivacious, it will not take me long. <laughs> so do you all hear me this morning? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I want, though, if I can, to get you to turn to Jonah. Not that Minister Still did not read it, but... Verse 5, I'm going to read a little further. It says in chapter 3 of Jonah, The people of Nineveh believe God's message. And how much you can just stop there if you really wanted to. And from the greatest to the least. Yes, I'm going to rethink that. And the people of Camden believe God's message from the greatest to the least. They decided to go without food and wear sackcloth and show their sorrow. And when the mayor heard that what every real preacher preach, preach, she stepped down from City Hall, dressed herself. City Council member Wilson is here in South Claus and Ashes. And the mayor and all the municipal leaders sent a decree throughout the city. No one, not even animals, may eat or drink anything at all. Everyone is required to wear sackcloth and pray earnestly to God. Everyone must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. And so for a few moments this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject. People are much more ready than you realize. Will you help me this morning? Say to somebody around you, if you can't find anyone, that means you're too far away. <laughs> you don't come to church to sit by yourself. <laughs> People are much more ready <laughs> than you realize. <laughs> come on, all, it may take two folk. You scoot down, all y'all together. <laughs> People are much more ready <laughs> than you realize. <laughs> Shall we bow? Shall we pray? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, to the power of thy grace divine. Let my soul look up with steadfast hope. Let my will be lost in thine, and we will be careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Oliver Wendell Holmes, perhaps one of the greatest justices that our nation has ever known, have been quoted, but we're more familiar with what George W. Bush said when he said, discrimination is to require anything less of others. George Bush, George W. Bush is known for saying, uh, the second part of that is, beware of the soft bigotry of low expectations. And so this morning, I, I just want to kind of say to all of us this morning that Discrimination is not just George Zimmerman looking at a black man and killing him because he's black. I don't, I mean, I get too many eight mans. Remember, football comes on today. <laughs> but discrimination is much more than just color. It often is class. It is often exactly what Oliver Wendell Holmes said. It is... Uh, the soft bigotry of low expectations. And what a, a great thing to say as school starts because too many of us have told our children just pass. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. 
Too many of us are buying overpriced sneakers for children who are totally underachieving. just our children, it is also having to, expecting too little of ourselves. That the way we conceive ourselves, the way we see ourselves becomes our own reality. And so, when we expect too little of ourselves, when we look for others to do too much for us and we don't expect enough for ourselves, we do something that is insidious. We, 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 we allow our futures to be dictated by our past. That uh, on this youth Sunday, that if you simply did not study and you got a C in math last year and you say I'm not good in math because you didn't study and got a C, you've already. Because 20 years ago, you went, 30 years ago, you tried to go in college to start a business and you really didn't know what you were doing, didn't halfway believe anyway, and it failed, and you're failing to try again, you have no idea how that becomes a gargantuan stumbling block. That when we don't think enough, when we don't expect enough, when we fail to remember that Paul says to the church of Philippi, he says, I'm forgetting those things. Is there a Bible reader just somewhere? That are behind. And I press forward to the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. That, that we doom our destinies, that we dampen our deliverance, that we trump our triumph and we trample on the treasure that is already in you that needs to be refined. You do know the difference between coal and diamond is pressure. You do know that uh, Frederick Douglass would not have been who he was had he not met that vicious slave seasoner Willie Covey. You, you, you do know that Dr. King was on the verge of uh, uh, obscurity had he not ran into that rapid racist Bill uh, Bull Connor. That, that until you meet something that makes you have to reach down, deep down within yourself and go beyond what you can do on your own, I call that the Holy Spirit. And when you reach beyond what you could do on your own and you get as far as you can on your own, that's when you can say, Father, I stretch. Have you ever tried that? My hand to thee, nor the help I know. But my God, how in the world do you give up when you've not tried? I hope you don't expect me to feel sorry for you when you don't wake up till 12 o'clock. How many of you going to ever get a good job and you don't have anything to put on the resume but your name? Therefore, the past becomes our baggage and we inherit the baggage of our past, this bigotry, these biases. And that is the issue of Jonah that our projections that we make based totally on the past keeps us mired in the present. That so often we are not trying, so often we are not moving, so often we are not planning because we've already defeated ourselves because of what we knew. Can I get a little closer? Somebody said, well, because my last marriage didn't work out, I'm not going to try again. Somebody said, I'm not going to try to move out. I'm not going to try to do better. I'm not going to try to take a higher level math course because I wasn't good in basic math. 
Well, I, I want you to know this morning that we have a God that's always changing. And, 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 and well, not only do we have a God that's changing, somebody said, well, the Bible said the Lord said he's the same yesterday and every day. Well, there are new mercies you see. So in other words, it's not that he's changing, you're changing. And so as you change, you find out how good he is. I, 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 I played basketball this week. I could not move for two days. I did not know. You know, I'm used to falling down and getting back up and playing again. I tried to get out the car. I said, Britt, come here. Help daddy pick that up. <laughs> Basketball not changing. I'm changing. And so what I'm realizing is that as I get older, I'm finding out what it means to sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I'm realizing that when I used to see everything, especially some money on the other side of the room, now I look at these books and I bring them close, can't read them, bring them far, can't read them with glasses, can't read them, amazing great. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. So, so when I get up in the morning, the grace that God had for me 10 years ago is not enough for me today. What the Lord brought me through yesterday is only a testimony of what he's able to do for me today and tomorrow. So I wake up like the clock sisters say, I'm expecting a miracle every day because God can make a way out of no way. So if you want to be defeated, if you want to be down, get out of here right now. I need to be around people that know God has all power. I don't care how bad the economy is. Guess what? God got all power. The first thing they taught me is not my ABCs. They taught me he got the whole world in his hand. So, so, so we inherit the bigotry of our past. Can I give you an example? Um, the library in downtown Detroit is stuck in remediation because the folk in the city are stuck in remediation. And so they have computer classes for folk who don't know how to work computers. But in Little Birmingham, which wish they had the facilities of downtown and they're working real fast to get it. Put an exclamation point there, I'll come back to that. And so I thought because I was black and didn't live in the city, that they would not help me because they've created a little coalition of little elite little cities around there uh, that work together to keep this very vibrant little library. So I'm looking at these other children working on math during the summer, other children working on these computers. So something told me, go ask her, will they give your children computer access? First thing I start thinking is, well, I'm black. And I ain't black, I'm a black big man. I'm not even light-skinned. But I got beyond all that, and I asked the lady, and bless heaven, the Birmingham that I have been taught, the Birmingham of Coleman Young, the Birmingham of Oakland County, of L. Brooks Patterson, that always we built this negativity against, I found that before I knew it, those little white ladies were working, and doing all they could to make this big black six foot three black man with two little cream colored kids. <laughs> in so much that before I left, they called and said, we have some authors coming in town. And I just figured you wanted your children to be there. Won't you bring them? And they'll be sitting up front. Well, I'm trying to tell you that sometimes God has changed yeah. folks' mindsets. And the folk that you often are fearful of, God can transform their mindsets that where there were stumbling blocks, God can make them stepping let me get back to my text. And so God often is changing and transforming circumstances. And that won't happen if we get stuck. 
Now, let me say, I'm not naive. I did not, part, partly when I went there, I did not go there with sneakers on. I did not go there looking like I'm getting ready to have a protest. Because they had something that I wanted. I came in there saying, good morning, how are you? I cleaned up my English and I asked questions and I found out that hard half of our problem sometimes can be how we present ourselves and the demeanor that we carry ourselves in. Can I at least get an amen sometime? So, 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 so now part of our problem, not all, and I don't want to romanticize our reality, but I want to say that sometimes we are lost in these stereotypes. And let me tell you, uh, the first thing I know anyone who's going to take an SAT, MSAT, uh, MCAT, whatever you're taking, is any question that is all is usually wrong. All white folk are not bad. And all black folk are not good. Help me, Holy Ghost. All Mexicans are not goofy and docile. All Asians are not smart and own businesses. All Jews are not rich. And all of our young black children are not unambitious and gangsters. Even though some of our young children may dress that way, it may be because we've not taught them how to dress better. That we've not told them that there is more to life than rapping, singing, and playing sports. Well, that, that, that happens to us in church because as I look even this morning, there are some neighbors that would come to church if you just simply asked them. There are some co-workers that w w need to know Jesus, but you've never presented it to them. Uh, there are some boyfriends that you left at their house or yours. And I have a funny feeling I know where they slept last night. That if you just simply said, baby, if you would come to church to me and hear my pastor trying to preach, maybe we would not argue so much. But when we look at folks and already project where they're going, we do a disfavor to them and to us. We already count folk out. You look at every young man and say he ain't nothing but a drug dealer. If you look at some of our poorly dressed young women and only say she's a prostitute. If you get so filled up with uh, uh, these notions about sexuality that you make up in your mind that we don't want gay folk in our church. You create all these stereotypes. Well, let me just say this and I'm quickly going to a close. And that is, had Barry Gordy thought of that, Europe would have never known. I told Barry Gordy at that point that, that uh, don't put black folk on an album, it won't sell well. But I'm telling you that most of our black musicians that can't make money here can stay in Europe. Yeah. Am I telling the truth this morning? That, that Europe would have never known Donna Ross or Marvin Gaye. They would have never known the Temptations. They would have never known the Four Tops. That if the folk had allowed those barriers to maintain, Steve Jobs would have never been able to take that expensive smartphone and put them in cheap, broke hands. If, 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 if Bill Gates would have thought that way, he would have never left IBM and the mainframe computer and understood that the person that a, 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 an average person really can and wants a personal computer. And if the church keeps where it is doubting and quibbling and squabbling over how to just barely exist, we can never soar and be the church that God calls us to be, that takes the gospel everywhere to everyone and let them know Jesus is the answer. Can I get one witness for the world today? Above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. But God has called us to evangelize everyone. And so Jonah could not understand that because Jonah, like us, engaged in the blame game. 
And I'm going to tell you why I don't like the blame game, because it's a short-circuited conversation. That immediately when you start talking about who did wrong, you take the jest, the zeitgeist of that conversation, and you have already squandered the opportunity to find solutions. Because you put all the gas on what the past is. I wish I had a witness in here. That immediately you'll find, you start talking about the problem that we face. Folks want to talk about, you know how that happened. No, I don't know why it happened. But what I do want to know is how we get out of it and how we grow beyond it and how we get better and how we grow and get to a higher height and a deeper depth. So, 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 so too often we engage in the blame and in the get blame game we can't make nothing happen. And so then we start looking at how middle class folk moved out. Well, the reality is folk do have a right to move out. That, that we start talking about the politicians, but guess what? Most of our politicians are not owned by us because we don't vote. I'm going to preach anyway. That we castigate and vilify and monsterize issues. That when we go to school board meetings, Monster Wilson can tell you we're not there to figure out how our children can be educated. We're there to point fingers and talk about what the paper said. But what we must do is understand that none of us are totally innocent in the mess we're in. No, 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 no. This is not just Republicans or Democrats. This is not just poor folk or rich folk. This is beyond black folk and white folk. This is the fact that we as the church have been too silent on the real issues of our community. That beyond whose name folks are baptized in, beyond how we baptize people, beyond what colors we're going to wear for these special days and raise money, that we are obligated to make a difference in the world. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the world, ye are the light of the world, and God does not necessarily need lights where folk are doing all right. God needs a light right in the city, right in the ghetto, right where the schools are bad, right where the addictions are out of control. Jesus said, I need a light right on Ninth and Kane Avenue. So what I mean, I mean this morning we're obligated. That if you want to blame, blame, let's blame ourselves. The last week, remember what Jonah said? Jonah said, it's me. Isn't that what he said? Uh, it's me. And so this morning we have an obligation to help someone else. We have an obligation not to be self-righteous and aloof. We have an obligation not to be so uh, critical of other people. But we have a obligation to take on the responsibility of the, of the degeneration in our community. That if we're really honest about it, whether we left the city or in the city, we are partly responsible for drug addiction. That we have been too silent knowing these young boys drop out of school and there's nothing else for ignorant little young boys who like expensive shoes to do but sell drugs. We're responsible for letting other folks come in and become landlords and put our people in these broke down houses. Help me, Holy Spirit. And, 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 and we're responsible for allowing red light districts, oh bless his holy name, to exist. And our children have to walk past prostitution on their way to school. We're, we're responsible for poor school districts knowing that it, less than a generation ago we couldn't even go in public libraries and my own grandparents never got a chance to go to secondary school because in Mississippi it was not important that little black children read and could properly write. But the fact that we have become so aloof and so preoccupied around I got mine, you get yours, that we've allowed two generations, maybe three, of little black children that look just like us, that can rap and cannot read, that can steal and do not know how to do anything else. So we must recognize that not only do we share the responsibility, but we share the sickness. Good God Almighty. That 
whether we pass millages or not, it ought not be while my kids grown. Because you're going to need that social security. You're going to get older, you're going to need to get some milk, and you need to know that those children that you walk past won't knock you down. But the reality is, is that we share in this sickness. That if our brothers and sisters are sick, we're sick. King said that we share this common garment of destiny that, uh, that if anything affects my brother, it affects me as well. That we cannot just sit back and see our school board and say it's dysfunctional and see political systems that are stagnant and children that have been labeled incorrigible and unteachable and distraught and not do anything about it. Because the sickness around us always affects us. That would be like you thinking that cancer can be in your leg and not affect your body. That when the body is sick, Everything is sick. Well, now, what do I mean? Well, the Lord said, and I'm through already. The Lord said that he told Jonah. Jonah didn't want to go. He didn't want to go to Nineveh because he thought that the folk in Nineveh were going to be like those little white ladies I saw in that library in Birmingham. He thought they were going to reject him. He thought that they were not going to help him. He had already preconceived notions about how they would respond. Well, guess what the Bible says? That when he did what God said do. Let me pause and put you in a secret. God never sends you anyway. He has not already prepared for you to go. Can I say that one more time? That if God sends you somewhere, God has already blazed a trail just for you. You don't have to fight. You don't have to kill. You don't have to steal. Whatever God has for you is for you. Whatever God wants to give you, you ain't got to knock nobody down, kill nobody, lie to nobody. It's for you. It has your name on it. And can't nobody get the response you'll get but you. I wish I could find one witness over there. God knows what God is doing all the time. He went there. Didn't want to do it, didn't feel like doing it, didn't think the folk were good enough. But the Bible says when he did what God said do, the folk were faced with their own disgrace. Do you know we have a group of young folk that are indifferent? That they've never really been taught right from wrong? That they've never really gone to church. They've never seen the church be the church. They see too much hustling in the pulpit. They see too much celebrity preachers on Sunday morning. That they've never really heard the gospel. And so while you think they're no good and they're about nothing, I suspect if we would just do what God tells us to do. Tell dying women, boys, and girls that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal. If you would just simply quit talking so much and just say, look at me. I used to be where you are, but the Lord did something for me. I don't have it all together, but I'm so much more than I used to be. God picked me up and God turned me around. And God placed my feet on solid ground. And I don't have it all together, but I'm praying. I don't have it all together, but I love the Lord. I don't have it all together, but the Lord gives me a way out of my trouble. And I just want to let you know God is still in the blessing business. The text says, they didn't cuss him out, they didn't throw him out. It said, the people Got down on knees. And let me tell you, sometime if you can, if you're physically able and your back not like mine was on Wednesday, you ought to get down on your knees. And maybe if you can get further than that, do like the Muslims, lay down on the ground. And say, Lord, cleanse me. Have you ever tried that before? Lord, wash me. Don't go there saying, Lord, if you find anything, you find more than you can even want to see. But Lord, say, cleanse me and use me because I want to be useful in your service. The text says they face down towards the east. They put themselves in sackcloth and ashes. And if you come on Tuesday, we'll talk about what sackcloth and ashes mean. It meant that they were repenting. 
that they had a, something in, inside of them that many of us are losing, and that is a conscience. That they realized the things they were doing were not right, but they just needed to hear somebody officially tell them that the Lord says it's wrong. That you ought not be selling drugs. That you ought not be robbing, stealing, and killing. That you ought not be skipping school. But when they heard it, the Bible says they mourned and they repented. And this morning, I want to say to you, we ought to be repenting. When we look at the condition we're in, when, when on this side of Brown versus the Board of Education, only 25 children finished Camden High, we ought to be mourning this morning. When we can see a library that's open and the children are on the computer on Facebook and don't read any books at all, we ought to be crying this morning. When we see a school system that has been taken over because we did not take the opportunity of educating our own children seriously. We ought to be crying this morning. When over half the children in America are poor and four out of five black children live in poverty, we ought to be crying this morning. But then finally, I'm going to leave you this morning when I tell you. That the way this starts is that the leadership got to get together. I told you last week I had not been bringing my kids to Sunday school, but I found a way. And I'm telling you this morning that if there ever going to be a change, we can't start from the bottom. We got to start at the top. So the text says the king. The mayor, the city council people, the state representative, the school board captains, the local agents in the community, those that were uh, uh, guilds and captains of the politics and the city council members and school board members, cross guards and school teachers got to get serious about seeing reformation. And we can't just do it because we try a new curriculum. We can't do it because we use a new model. The text says that they cried out to the Lord. And the mayor and the king and the pastor and the school principal said, we're going to cry out to God. We're going to be repentant. We're going to be sorry because we've been guilty of the soft bigotry of low expectation. We're going to get down on our knees and we're going to ask the Lord to forgive us from our sin and give us a brand new start. And that's all I'm telling you this morning, that God will give you a brand new start. That I don't care how many times you messed up. I don't care how many times you messed up. God is a God of the second chance, fiftieth chance, a thousand chance, a million chance. Oh, can I tell you, I got a testimony this morning. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, sinking very deeply staying within, but the master of the sea. Heard my despairing cry. From the waters, he lifted me. Now safe am I. I got a testimony this morning. I didn't do it on my own. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else would help. Love. They call him Jesus. Love. Love lifted me. Ain't anybody here? Won't God lift you up? Love. Oh, I wish I had some help this morning. Love.